afternoon. I'm Raylene Ramsey. This is your afternoon news fix for Monday the 27th of November. Prime Minister Chris Luxon says he wants public service layoffs to start as soon as possible. Luxon and his new cabinet colleagues have been handed their ministerial warrants and are officially in government. National campaigned on cutting public sector waste. Luxon says they want chief executives to find 6.5% savings. Whether it's stopping programmes that we're no longer supporting, maybe not filling the vacancies that exist in, in current roles, and importantly then yes, having a look at headcount and making sure that everyone employed is actually hooked up to one of the big objectives and tasks that we have. Winston Peters says it's sad he didn't get to the Pacific Island Forum, having now picked up the foreign affairs portfolio. He missed the forum early this month because of post-election talks, but says he won't waste any time now. What's happened in the last three years, you've seen when it comes to foreign affairs. The ball has been dropped. There's no use covering it off. And the moment Penny Wong became elected in Australia, she was on the plane immediately. The Council of Trade Unions is asking the new government not to undo progress on workers' rights. CTU President Richard Wagstaff says he's written a briefing document to incoming ministers concerned the coalition's planning to scrap fair pay agreements. We really struggle to understand why you would go after bus drivers' wages as a priority on your short list when you've got you know, a whole host of um, really important and significant issues to deal with. Israel's Defence Force says extending a pause in fighting is a real possibility. Hamas has released 17 more hostages and the militant group also wants the four-day truce to continue. Another 39 Palestinian teenagers have been released. Israel Defence Force spokesperson Lieutenant Colonel Jonathan Conricus says the agreement includes the option to keep going. Arrests over several incidents in Auckland's county's Manuko over the weekend. Just before 12.30 Saturday afternoon, a man brandishing a weapon forced two people out of their car on Mervale Drive in Bucklands Beach. He took the car and personal items. Chelsea Daniels has more. Hours later, the car and two other vehicles, also allegedly stolen, arrived at a Pakuranga petrol station. The police helicopter saw all three vehicles from above and three individuals were eventually apprehended. Staff found a dog in one recovered vehicle, which has been reunited with its owner. Police say they've focused a lot of attention on ram raids recently. Data shows there were 154 fewer raids between January and October this year than the same time last year. Joey Dwyer reports. A police spokesperson says all ram raids across the country are attended and promptly investigated. So far, 735 stores have had security installations completed through the Retail Crime Prevention Programme. The spokesperson says they've also worked with social media platforms to remove posts, giving notoriety to young people after such offending. In sports headlines, New Zealand is poised to have speed climbers at the Olympics for the first time. Julian David and Sarah Tetzlaff have won their respective Oceania Olympic qualifiers in Melbourne. White Ferns captain Sophie Devine has been named in the team of the tournament as the Australian women's big bash nears the pointy end. Residents of the Tahitian village that will host the 2024 Olympic surfing event have voiced their opposition over plans to build a new judging tower on the reef, saying it will damage corals and risk the health of the lagoon. I'm Raylene Ramsey. That is your latest news fix. We'll be back with the next update tomorrow morning from the News Talk ZB Newsroom.